So here's a couple of, of examples on how to use the slope formula. We talked about how to derive this in class uh, using our Cartesian coordinate system and coordinate geometry. And it's pretty uh, easy to figure this out. It's just the rate of rise over run, or the change in y over the change in x. So we have our formula. So when you see a problem like this, you just have to remember the good old slope formula. And you have to write it down every time you use it so you'll remember it. It's probably one of the most important single formulas in algebra. We use it all the time, even up into calculus in various forms. So this is an extremely important formula. So I want to find the slope. So the problems are usually written like this. Find the slope of the line passing through the two points. So 3, 7, 5, 10. So first of all, I'll write down my slope formula. And m is the letter we use for slope. And that equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And this is what we do when we have two points. And then I write the structure of my formula down. Because I have negative signs in my formula, and I might have negative signs in my data. In this first example, we don't. But we could have it later, so it's very important that you indicate both situations. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to label my points. Please label your points, because I've got two points, x1, y1, x2, y2. Now, it doesn't matter what you call the 1s or the 2s. I can call these 2s and these 1s, or vice versa, as long as the 1s are together and the 2s are together. So I usually just write the first one as x1, y1, and the second one as x2, y2. That's the way I always do it. But you could reverse those. It won't make any difference. And then I carefully substitute my data into the formula. So notice, and once I have this written, it's very easy because I say, well, okay, what's y2? y2 is 10. What's y1? y1 is 7. What's x2? It's right up here. x2 is 5. And what's x1? x1 is right there. x1 is 3. So it saves guesswork because you see right there, you got your formula, you got your labeling, and you know what goes where. And then we just simplify that out. What's 10 minus 3? 10 minus, I'm sorry, 10 minus 7. That's 3. And then 5 minus 3 is 2, so there's your slope, and that's all you got to do. That's the rise over the run. It's a positive, so it's going to be uphill, and there you go. All right, now here's one with some negative signs in the data, and this is where this, is where this technique is, comes in handy. So again, I want to find the slope of the line that goes through these two points. So first of all, I will write my formula, n equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, and that's the change in y over the change in x. And then I'll write the structure of my formula, because I have a negative sign in the formula. And then I'll label my points, so I know what goes where. x1, y1, x2, y2, and again, as long as the, x, the ones are together and the twos are together, you won't have any problems. Okay, and then I just carefully substitute my data in. So what's y2? y2 is 6. What's y1? Negative 3. So now see, this is where I've got a negative in my data as well as a negative in my formula. So I've got double negatives. Okay. What's x2? Negative 6. And what's x1? x1 right over here is negative 2. So this is where sometimes students get confused if they don't write down this first and sometimes they forget one of the minus signs. All right, so you have a negative sign in your formula, negative signs in the top and the bottom of the formula, and negative signs in the data. And then we just multiply this out. What's a negative times a negative? Well, that's a positive. So I've got 6 plus 3 all over negative 6. And what's a negative times a negative? A positive plus 2. What's 6 plus 3? 6 plus 3 is 9. What's negative 6 plus 2? Negative 4. So you have negative 9 over 4. Now remember, when we have a fraction, if we have a negative sign in the bottom, the denominator, in the top, the numerator, or in front, it's the same thing. If you have one sign, it doesn't matter where it is. So I can take this sign, I could put it in the top, or I can put it in front. And that's what we're going to get. So there's your slope. Oops. Negative 9 fourths. Sorry about that. So take a look at that. That should make sense. Again, a negative times a negative is a positive, so I've got 6 plus 3. A negative times a negative is a positive here, but this negative carries over. 
6 plus 3 is 9. Negative 6 plus 4 is ne ne negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. And again, I can move this negative sign in the top or in front. So I'll just put it in front here, and there's your slope, negative 9 fourths. So if you follow this procedure step by step, write down your formula every time, label your points, you won't make any mistakes.